It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. A beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? It's a neighborly day in the beauty wood. A neighborly day for beauty. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? Welcome to Mr. Codger's neighborhood where we talk about scooter stories. All right, pipe down. You in the back. Yes, I'm doing another scooter story. I'll get, I'm getting to it. An S-Max, a crocodile, and Pedro south of the border. Let's get cracking. Good moto morning, beautiful people. Welcome to Kraken's Garage. First, uh, I wanted to give a shout out to Windy Therapy who just got his first shirt and he sent me one and it is lovely and thank you very much. I will be rocking it in my videos. Thank you very much, Eddie. I'll have a link to his channel down below if you have any interest. Today's scooter story is another wacky adventure of Kraken. It's in the middle of December. It had just snowed the day before and I travel off to South Carolina to purchase a Craigslist Yamaha S-Max, another 155cc scooter and ride it home in the month of December. So here we go. So why am I buying a, a scooter in the middle of winter? Uh, back when things were normal pre-pandemic, uh, uh, I would buy bikes that were uh, lightly used and, and people wanted out of them will sell them cheap when it's uh, cold and nasty outside rather than sit on them till next spring. This one is no exception. I found a gentleman down in South Carolina that uh, is selling it. It was right before Christmas and uh, I decided after talking with him and ironing it out uh, to hop a train and ride down to South Carolina. So this story dates back to December of 2016. So what I typically use is a uh, Craigslist search engine and uh, what I'm able to do is check all the neighboring states within a certain radius for a specific item I'm looking for. In this particular case, in 2016, the uh, Yamaha S Max was a hot ticket to have back then. Uh, this gentleman was selling it for kind of a handy price. So I felt it was a good deal and I reached out to the owner. He got right back to me and said he was just getting ready to take it off of Craigslist because he had no interest in it. In this case, it, he had had it on Craigslist for several months, so he was getting ready to throw in the towel. So we chatted on the phone several times and finally uh, uh, arrived upon a price that was very handy for me. He wanted out of it that bad. And now the problem was, how do I get down to uh, South Carolina to biscuits and gravy territory and figure out how to get this rocket home? Yes, I could take the trailer and hook it up to the car or my truck and drive down there, but where's the adventure in that? That's uh, pretty boring to me. I'm an adventurous person, an adventurous soul, and I always will be till the day I die. So I checked cheap airfare, bus tickets, train tickets versus towing a trailer down there. I opted to take the Amtrak from Virginia out of Fredericksburg to South Carolina for a poultry $65, which I would have spent more than that in gas. Ticket was purchased. I sent my itinerary to the gentleman selling the, the scooter and he felt it was solid enough to take it off of Craigslist. Very kind of him. People are so sketchy on Craigslist, so I was rather shocked about that. I watched the weather for a bit and took a shot at a window where I thought I might have clear sailing to get it home, which was Tuesday, December 7th, and get a motel and return back on December 8th. The train was to leave at 8.30 in the morning and arrive at Dillon, South Carolina at 5 p.m. So I get up, poop, shower, and shave, and off I go to the train station. Driving down there, I hear on the radio, a train crashed into a car and all the trains were delayed as a result. Sometimes I just feel like I'm snake bit. <laughs> and this one's starting out right out on the left foot, right out of the gate. So I, mu I muddled some obscenities and uh, just said, let's, let's just get, get on with it. <laughs> So on a side note, I'm, I'm dressed up in my uh, Dainese white coat and my Stormtrooper. I look like I'm a Stormtrooper from Star Wars movie and a nice dude rolls up to ask me what I ride. We strike up a conversation of, after uh, complaining about the late trains and he rides a BMW. I asked if he was a member on ADV Rider and he said, sure enough. I've met some outstanding folks on my adventures. It just never ceases to amaze me how small the world is sometimes. Now, Fredericksburg Amtrak train station is kind of a wild place. Uh, I'm at the train station waiting. There's no signage for what's going on with each of the trains. I 
Heck, I don't even know which side of the tracks to wait on, so it was a 50-50 guess. Uh, one train comes and it's not mine. This train station was built in 1910. Pretty cool, actually. Uh, clean as a pin, just a beautiful train station. There's a cool Bavarian restaurant there if any of you are uh, popping through Virginia. Uh, super nice Bavarian restaurant. Be sure to check that out. I wait and wait and finally my train came one and a half hours late. And of course I was on the wrong side of the track. So I do the flying tennis shoe to the other side, uh, up over a bridge to get to the other side of the tracks. And I just made it. Helmet and gear flapping in the breeze as I was running. Amtrak has free Wi-Fi, so I fired up the iPad and shot him an email that I was off to a roaring slow start. Asked him if he wanted to grab supper when I get there. He replied, sure, there's a chicken joint down the road. And I thought, screw it, it's Christmas. And to me, the, the spirit of Christmas is to just do a random act of kindness, or what I call a Rourke. That's my acronym for it, random act of kindness. And I asked him if he's down to go into a steakhouse, my treat. And uh, his reply just <laughs> had me dying laughing. His reply was, holy smokes, the Peddler Steakhouse is located here at south of the border. I eat there for, I eat there about once a month, a kick-ass filet and a great salad bar. You got a date, daddy-o, Gary. It's been a long time since somebody busted a daddy-o on me. Meet Gary, uh, he's a retired school teacher that lived up in New Jersey, cashed out on everything he owns, bought a mobile home, and headed south to find a place to retire. He stopped at Pedro's, south of the border, stuck his uh, RV right there, and decided to call it a life at Pedro's, south of the border. For those of you that don't know, Pedro's, south of the border, is a giant tourist trap off of US 95 in South Carolina, and it's just a massive uh, acreage of just cheesy stuff. Uh, you'll see billboards for 50 miles before you get to it. They sell everything from food to a movie theater to a shave and a haircut to fireworks. I mean, just a little bit of everything. It's kind of a wild place. In my opinion, uh, Pedro's is the grande el grosso of all tourist traps. So like every trip I take, I, uh, it'll be in the rain. That's a given. It happens to me every time. Here's Tuesday's weather outlook. It's not looking good for the entire eastern seaboard. A random pick as visibility was terrible for picks with all the train. It was pouring raining at that point. So I snapped a pitch, uh, picture as we were going through Richmond, which I believe this was over the James River crossing through. So Gary picks me up at the train station and we're off to supper. We had a very good steak at Peddler's and he asked if I would like to uh, watch some TV and have a beverage. Sure, a motel is gonna suck, so why not? So it's at this point in the story where people think I have a screw loose. Um, Gary was more than comfortable. I'm very, very perceptive at reading people. And Gary uh, was just a good soul. He really was. Uh, he was a solid man. And he didn't want to see me after buying him a nice steak dinner, uh, get stuck with a hotel bill. So uh, he, had, he said I could sofa surf in his um, uh, RV, which was very kind of him. And I was comfortable doing that. So there you go. We won't talk about how my six foot four body didn't fit on his sofa and I was <laughs> kind of all scrunched up, but that's another story. So before we head over to the uh, his RV, he says, hey, you want to check out the crocodiles? And I'm like, sure, why not? So we roll up and there were the crocodiles right there in the middle of December in the wintertime. I couldn't believe my eyeballs, but uh, Pedro's even has crocodiles. So we were hanging out watching some TV. Um, uh, he stopped so I can pick up a six pack of beer while we're uh, chilling at his RV for the evening. Come to find out he's been riding bikes his whole life. I asked which his favorite bike was and he replied hands down the Yamaha V-Max. Right on Gary. The need for speed. The deal with the S-Max is he had a very bad stroke right after he purchased it and he feels his riding has come to an end. Something every single one of us that's watching this video uh, it pulls on my heartstrings to hear this for, about Gary, because sooner or later that's going to be me, and probably sooner as I'm no spring chicken. Quite frankly, it scares the heck out of me. Complications from the stroke has reduced the use of his hands and no feeling in the left at all. I'm staring at my biggest fear, myself one day soon. Gary's 70, had a good run on bikes, but it's still a heart-wrenching for me to hear this news. Words can't describe how heavy uh, my heart was when... Uh, we got done talking about this topic. I have a long ride and possibly gonna get rained on and it's very cold to get home. So I'm up early the next morning about 6 a.m. anxious to get on the road, 
and not so anxious to check the weather. We have a cup of coffee, do the paperwork, shake hands, take a few pics, and I ride away feeling like I have a new friend. And that's what it's all about, folks. Now on this trip, I have my usual backpack and my uh, Krega dry bag that I strap. It's a compression sack I strap to the rear seat for something to lean up against. That's Gary's win in the background of this picture. I had a uh, Amazon um, uh, cheesy iPhone 6 Plus holder uh, that I clamped to the handlebar to use for my nav to get home. It worked great, actually. Visibility was decent, but there was a lot of moisture in the air from it raining all day the previous day. Gary had topped off the gas tank uh, for me for my trip. Just wow. So just, again, a random act of kindness goes a long ways. I rolled for about 100 miles and pulled over for coffee and gas at a cheesy truck stop number one. So far, so good, no issues. I'm sitting there warming up and a dude rolls up on me and says, hey, my bike got stolen two years ago and I've been saving up for another one. I saw you in all your gear and just wanted to say hi. I said, right on, dude. Go get you one today. Life is too short to not follow your dreams, and I hope to see you on the road. My warm, fuzzy moment on that very cold morning. So just like the trip to uh, from Austin, Texas back to Virginia, I'm also running my Glimpse app, so Mrs. Kraken and whoever cares whether I take another breath knows exactly where I'm at during this entire journey. The weather was cold. It was in uh, the upper 30s to lower 40s. But I literally hit the lottery as a cold front is coming in tonight that's sweeping across the nation, which was going to drop a whole bunch of snow. So I missed that by less than 12 hours. So it was nice to win one for a change regarding the weather. Second gas stop was 200 miles into the ride, running like a champ with zero issues. On the third gas stop, I went to start it and the battery was half dead. No surprise there, as I was uh, using a heated jacket. Yes, I knew the draw was going to overwhelm the battery, a puny little battery on the scooter, but I can't take that cold for that long a period of time at those speeds. The X-Max actually cruises at 70 miles an hour. That's right, 155cc scooter, so I'm zipping right down US 95 headed north. I normally carry a lithium jumper box. I have one at home, but when I read the rules and regulations to ride on Amtrak, no knives, I always carry a pocket knife on me, so I have some sort of personal protection. The lithium battery was uh, a big no-no on the train, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, I was kind of salty I didn't have those items with me, knowing this was gonna take place. So I'm scrounging around the gas station and everybody that pulls up, anybody got any jumper cables? One dude in his truck did, boom, I'm off and rolling, got it started again. I made it home with no issues and just a tad over 500 miles. So the last 200 miles, I did not use the heated jacket. Uh, I was concerned that the battery would crap out on me again. It was damn cold. I mean, really cold. I stowed my gear and headed for a hot shower. All in all, it was a fantastic trip and I made a new friend in the process. Now, DMV, when you go to buy, make a purchase like this, uh, Virginia DMV, you can log online and print off a temporary tag. However, it's just paper, so I had uh, nothing to uh, really tape it to. So I cut up the uh, cardboard uh, six-pack of beer holder that I got and used that to make my uh, license plate tag a little more rigid than just paper. And my Sam Adams six-pack last night worked like a champ. Only I get into these situations. The conclusion of this story is I, I fixed up the bike, everything that was, if it had any scratches, I replaced any pieces, I did a complete service on it. It was showroom condition. And I put it on the uh, local ads for Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, and also on Cycle Trader. And a couple from Harper's Ferry, West Virginia, came down to buy it. Lovely couple. This lady was so excited because they had looked at so many scooters. They were always beat up, laid down, scratched up, and had a lot of issues. And she was jumping up and down, no lie, jumping up and down, almost peed her pants to find this scooter. and. Uh, she was so nervous she didn't want to take it for a ride, so her husband took it out for a spin, and they were just happy as a clam at high tide. Uh, this young lady uh, was buying this scooter for herself for her 67th birthday. God bless her, you know? She's not giving up on life. She's out there making it happen, and I feel like I was a stepping stone on that journey. So that's what Kraken does in his garage usually all winter long uh, is uh, wrench on bikes and then sell them in the springtime to help foot the bill of my addiction of all things on two wheels. 
And this one had a happy ending, and as usual, it was a really strange story uh, of my adventures. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Here's my ghost dog, uh, Bourbon. He's here to remind me to uh, wrap up this video. I hope you enjoyed today's uh, Mr. Codger's Neighborhood Scooter Story. <laughs> So I'm throwing another bone to my scooter thugs of some of my adventures on scooters. You can have just as much fun on just about anything on two wheels. Go out there and make it happen. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe button right down there. And remember, folks, go riding because it's good for you. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.